Let's open our Bibles to Luke chapter 8. And we're going to read verse 4 to verse 8. Luke chapter 8, verse 4 to verse 8. And we're going to share the Word of God this morning for a few minutes. Do you have it? If you have it, say amen. If you don't, we'll wait for you. If you didn't bring your Bible, you can look up at the screen. Luke chapter 8, verse 4 to verse 8. The Word of the Lord says the following. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spoke to them by a parable. And he said, Jesus speaking, A sower went out to sow his his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up, with it and choked it. But other fell on good ground and sprang up and it bore fruit. Amen. It bore fruit and a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Can you say amen to God's word this morning? Matthew 13, 8 says, that last verse there, it says it a little bit different. Matthew 13, 8 says this. But other seed fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Other fell on good ground. There was seed that fell on good ground and it resulted in thirtyfold harvest, sixtyfold harvest, and a hundredfold harvest. How many of you would like to be able to be fruitful in your life as a believer? How many of you would like to increase in your life as a believer? Even even 30% growth would be good. Even 30% increase this year compared to last year would be good, would would mean that we're going forward, that we are advancing. But imagine the prospect of going into 60-fold or to 100-fold. The possibility is there to have a hundredfold return, a hundredfold harvest this year in your life. Can you say amen? In your life. That this year would be a much better year than last year. That this year will reap either 30% more than last year, 60% more than last year, or 100% more than last year. Can you say amen? But the difference, the difference is... The difference is in the soil, in the ground. In the ground. The soil, the quality of the soil that we have will determine the quality of the harvest that we produce. There's nothing wrong wrong with the seed. There's nothing wrong with God's word. God's word is powerful. God's word has the possibility to heal, to restore Amen. There's nothing wrong with God's word, but there is something wrong many times with our life, with our soil. And it is you and I that need to take the initiative this year to make sure that the soil is good. The initiative is on your behalf and on my behalf, not God's. God's initiative is just this, to release his word. It is our responsibility, we must take the initiative, we must make it happen that our soil is in good condition for the Word of God. So then to give give all the possibilities and to to give it all the the positive nutrients that it needs so that it can produce 30, 60, 100 fold in our life. So that we can be flourishing Christians, so that we can be prospering Christians. Amen. Amen. So that God's word does not get lost in our life. Can you say amen this morning? There are four different grounds that this parable talks about. Number one, and uh, we need to see which ground we we are a part of. We, We want to be good ground, but there's four different grounds. Number one, wayside. Everybody say wayside. Come on, say wayside. Now, before I... 
before I look at this in the context of you and I individually, I want to look at this parable in the context of a, of a church. So before we look at this individually, let's look at this parable in the context of a church. We, we want our church to be a church that is good ground. That our church would have good soil. That our church would, would grow, develop, flourish this year 30%, 60%, 100%, 100 fold. We want our church to be good ground. But the truth is that there are, there are four different types of grounds that exist in churches today. And we don't want to be the first, the first three. We want, to, we want to be good ground. We want to be good ground, a good ground church. We want to be a church that when people come into this place, God's word has an effect in their life. God's word produces in their life. God's word changes their mentality, changes their mindsets. Those that are sick physically, God's word heals them. Amen. But the truth is that there's three, three other types of grounds that today exist in the churches. And number one is the, what I call the wayside churches. Wayside churches. Hallelujah. This church, it says there, the wayside, a sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside and it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it. Number one, there are wayside churches today that exist. What is a wayside church? A wayside church is a worldly church. A worldly church is a wayside church. A wayside church is a church where the seed is thrown and the Bible says there that the seed is trodden down. The word trodden literally means that the seed is trampled on. The seed is rejected. The seed is stepped upon. Today we have a worldly wayside church where God's word is trampled on. Where God's word is stepped upon and rejected. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? That's not, that's not exciting, but that's the truth. We have a wayside church today where God's word is not taken seriously, where, where God's word is trampled on. Anything that is holy, anything that is righteous is trampled on. The wayside church, which is a worldly church, is a godless church. Can you say amen? It's a godless church. What I mean by that is it has, it has less of God and more of man. It has less of God's word and, and more of man's word. It, ha, it has less of God's kingdom and more of the world's kingdom. There, are, there, are, there, are, there is a church today that is a wayside church, a worldly church where God, listen, and this, this is happening all over the world. And you, you can say, well, how can you say, how can you say in the church they're, they're trampling on God's word? Because they are. You just have to look at some and hear some preaching and hear some teaching and, 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 and observe some churches today to realize that, that there's a godless church rising up. Nothing of God, nothing of His Word, holiness, righteousness, being separated unto God doesn't exist anymore. The world is in the church. The world has invaded the church. And when somebody gets up to preach, like I'm preaching right now, it's rejected, it's trampled on, and the fowls of the air, which are representing demonic spirits, come and eat it up. Amen. People love going to wayside churches. <laughs> People love going to godless churches. Why? Because we are comfortable there. I can drink Saturday night and sing to Jesus Sunday morning. Godless. Worldly. I can fornicate during the week and then lift up my holy hands on Sunday morning. Amen. I can live how I want, 
do what I want, act how I want, amen, talk how I want, watch what I want, and then go to a church that keeps me just where I want to be. And I'm still going to heaven. Amen. Wayward. A way, wayside church. Am I shouting this morning? Hallelujah. There's no difference today between the world and the church. There's no difference in the culture of the church and in the culture of the world. There's no difference in, in many cases in the, in, the, uh, in the atmosphere of the church and in the atmosphere of the world. In the language of the church and in the language of the world, there should be a difference. Can you say amen? There should be a, a dividing line between the church and the world. Hallelujah. But where, wherever there is a wayside church, you're going to find it's a worldly church. Where God's word is rejected, God's word is stepped upon. Mm. You know what it says there, if you read in, in another when, when Jesus explains the parable, he says those in the wayside are those when they hear the word, they don't understand it. They don't understand it. So the words, the word of God's word is not important to them. Understanding the word in many circles is not essential anymore. Bible truths, Bible doctrine. Even Bible long-held theologies is stepped upon. God's Word has very limited access in many Christian circles today. God's Word has no access to produce. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get too hard on, on us this morning, and, and, um, but when it says there, the fowls of the air devour it, the literal word for the, okay, it's Sunday morning, but the fowls signify and typify demons of the air. Where do the demonic beings, they live in the air? In Ephesians 6, principalities, powers, spirit, spiritual wickedness in high places. They come and they, and they eat. They eat the word. Mm. A, a word, a, a church that is godless. Why is the nation today as it is? Why has the nation gone so far? Why have we been debating things that 70 years ago was a non question? You know why? And I, and I, I don't want to be a prophet of doom and gloom. The reason is because the church started going astray. One of the preachers of the old time says, as the pulpit goes, so goes the nation. That might have been Jonathan Edwards that said that. As the pulpit goes, so goes the nation. Or Charles Finney, one of the two. As the church goes, so goes the nation. You're not going to, church, we're not going to, we cannot sit back and say when, when, the, when there are Christian circles today who accept and support gay marriage, the word is being trampled on. Don't get quiet on me, come on. We all agree here. When, the, when Christians are debating, when quest Christians are supporting that which is anti-Bible, you know God's word is being trampled on. When preachers are standing up and not taking a stand and saying, this is what God's word says, I don't care what the world says, I don't care what politics say, I don't care what the prime minister says, I don't care what... Joe Blow says at work, God's word says this, you, you, you know that the, that the church is going astray. A wayside church where God's word is trampled on. God's word is being trampled on. Wayside church. Number two, 
and some fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. This church is what we call a stony church. What is a stony church? It says there, and some fell upon a rock, and as, it, as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Another, another uh, chapter says it lacked depth. Because the, the moisture is, in, is about 20 centimeters down. The stony ground, the stony church is a superficial church. It is a church of no depth. And I'm going to go a little bit further and I, and I will say it is a, what I write here, I write here, it is a spiritless church. It is a wordless church. Superficial. Seeker sensitive. Amen. Superficial. Moisture, moisture in the Bible talks about the presence of God. Moisture in the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit. Water, moisture. So the stony ground lacks moisture. This church is a spiritless church. Dry. No power. Amen. Don't believe in the supernatural anymore. Don't believe in the glory anymore. Church, if there's anything that we need today more than ever before, it's the presence of God. We need the glory of God. We need the anointing of God. We need the moisture of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, I don't want to do church. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot sing. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot preach. It's the Holy Spirit that creates moisture in the church so that God's Word can have access and can produce life in that church. We need the Holy Spirit. There is a spiritless church today. It's a stony church. Without depth, superficial, and no power. No power. We want, we want to have church our way. We want to put God in a box. Lacks moisture. It's a stony church. Spiritless. How many of you can say with me this morning, Pastor, we need the power of the Holy Spirit in the church. We need the moisture of the Holy Spirit. You can walk into a church and you can, you can sense it. there's moisture. You can sense it. there's moisture. You can sense that the Holy Spirit's there. And you can also sense when He's not there. It's a stony church. It's a stony church. It's very superficial. No depth. Number three. And some fell among thorns... And the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. This one is the, a religious church. We have a worldly church, a spiritless church, and a religious church. Religion is like thorns that will choke you. It will, religion, listen. Jesus said to the Pharisees and to the Sadducees and to the religious, you make God's word of no effect through your traditions. Your traditions are choking the word. Your traditions are paralyzing the word. A thorny church is a religious church that has fallen into dogmas, has fallen into liturgy, has fallen into a, into a traditional method, into a box. Amen. Religion will suffocate you. Mm. Religion says God cannot do it any other way. Religion says God cannot do it in a different way. How many people today are going to hell because they hold on to a religion? We don't believe in religion. We believe in relationship. Listen to this. I, 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 I don't want to be hard, you know, but I have to be. But there are some 
Pentecostal spirit-filled churches today that when you walk in there, it's like going to Catholic Mass. Everything's so proper. Everything is in a box. We say we're spirit-filled, but we're actually more religious than the Catholic sometimes. If we're not careful. How hungry are we for God? See, if we're not careful, even the way we worship is religious. We do the same things every week. We sit in the same seat every week. We have the same posture at church every week. Nothing different. Nothing changes. Religion. How about coming to church with a sense of excitement? with a sense of expectation that something new could happen today. Hallelujah. Something fresh can happen today. God is about to move. And when God moves, He moves how He wants to move. And His wind blows where He wants to blow. And I just want to be in it. Hallelujah. Amen. But we become real religious. We sing the three songs, quick ones, and the two slow ones, and the announcements, and the preaching, and the altar call, and the coffee, and we go home. How about we just let God come into this place, hallelujah, and have his way and move and that the glory would come. Ed, listen, church, every time you come into the presence, listen to this, every time you come into the presence of God, you've got to take something off. Now, I'm not talking about your clothes. Some of you just went, you've got to take something off. Moses, when he was standing in the very presence of God in front of the burning bush, the first thing he was told was, take off your sandals, take off your shoes, for the place that you stand is holy ground. Every time you come into an atmosphere where God's presence is, there's a demand to take something off. There's a demand to lay something on the altar. See, Moses' sandals typifies worldliness, dirty. Take it off. Take off the worldliness. Take off that which is sin. Take off that which is not pleasing to God. Take off the religion. Take off the religion. It suffocates. It'll prick you. Amen. It'll destroy God's word. And some of you say, but pastor, I don't don't feel, I don't sense God's presence. Yeah, because you're not allowing God's presence to come. Because you're held to a religion. You're held to a dogma. You're held to a way of doing things. This is how I'm meant to do it. What about if God wants to change it? Take off your shoes. Take off the religion. Take off the tradition. Who cares that your mom and your dad are this? What do you want to be? I was born a Buddhist and I will die a Buddhist. Take it off. I was born Catholic. I'm going to die Catholic no matter what. Take it off. I was born Muslim and I'm going to die Muslim no matter who tells me about Jesus. Take it off. Take off the religion. Hallelujah. Take off the religion. Take off that which is holding you back from going deeper and deeper in the things of God. Take it off. The man that was healed by Jesus in the the New Testament, he took off his cape and he ran after Jesus. There's always a demand to take something off. thorns let's not fall into a dogma church let's not fall into a routine let's not fall into a tradition let's always have that sense of expectation let's always have that sense of urgency let's always have that sense that God can do it another way that God can do it in a special way today some of you are struggling with sin some of you are struggling with sickness some of you are struggling in your marriage some of you are struggling with your children and the last thing you should do is come to church and worship him the same way 
The last thing you should do is come to church and just go through the routine. You need God. You need His presence. He's got to show up and you need to do something you've never done before. Because the medicine's not going to cut it. The psychologist is not going to cut it. The counselor is not going to cut it. Your friends are not going to cut it. You need the presence of God. Hallelujah. Can you say amen with me this morning? Can you give the Lord a big clap offering there where you are? You need the presence of of God. Take off the religion. Take off what you know. Take off where you came from. Give it to God. And watch how that seed begins to produce in your life. And the good ground, the good ground, hallelujah, is what we want to be. The good ground is a ground that is not worldly. A ground that is not religious. A ground that is not spiritless. A ground that is ready for God's word. A ground that is ready for revival. How many of you are ready for revival in this church? How many of you are ready? How how many of you will take the initiative to clean the soil, to plow the soil? How many of you will take the initiative to get the soil ready in this church so that God can do 30, God can do 60, that God can do 100 fold. Hallelujah. What God wants to do is, is it's going to amaze us. It's going to leave us in awe. But God's waiting for a church that will clean the soil, for a church that will get the soil ready, get rid of worldliness, get rid of spiritness, get rid of re- religion, and, and say, God, here we are. Do what you want in our lives. Can you say amen? Come on, say amen, hallelujah, say amen, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We want to move into a higher percentage. We want to go higher with God. Who wants to go higher with God? Hallelujah. Who wants to go greater with God? Who wants to go deeper with God? Who wants to see God's shining, His light over your life? Who wants to see God, who wants to see God highly lifted up? Hallelujah. Who wants to experience the supernatural? Who wants to flow in the prophetic? Who wants to flow in the gifts of the Spirit? Who wants to worship God like when Jacob worshipped God? There was an open heaven. Hallelujah. There was a ladder between heaven and earth. Angels were coming and angels were going. Hallelujah. He said, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. How many Christians are like that? Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. I would go there every Sunday and I did not know it. The presence of the Lord is there. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. We want to be good ground. I say we want to be good ground. We want to be good soil. We don't want to be worldly. We want to be godly. We don't want to be spiritless. We want to be spirit-filled. We don't want to be religious. We want to be free. When people walk through that door, that they would say, "Ah, there's something about this place. There's a freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, There is freedom. Come on, say where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. Freedom. How many of you would like the Spirit of the Lord to be here today? How many of you would like the Spirit of the Lord to be in your life today? Now let me just talk for a few minutes to you personally. Because it's one thing if the church is flourishing. one One thing if the church is advancing. It's another thing if you're flourishing and if you're advancing. It's one thing to to get the church's soil clean. It's another thing to get your soil clean. So that you can produce in your life 30, 60, 100 fold. Amen. Soil, soil preparation is the first step before growing a crop. Any farmers here? Any farmers here in the city? One of the most important tasks in soil preparation is tilling, plowing, and turning the soil and loosening it. 
One of the one of the ways you prepare soil is you destroy the weeds. You destroy the weeds that compete for water and for sunlight and nutrients. You cannot simply go to your backyard and dig a hole in the ground and place a seed in the, in the, in the hole and expect a vegetable crop to produce. It's not going to happen. Hey, I've tried it. It's not going to happen. Even hobby and personal farmers, when they, when they prepare their ground, they... They prepare it in an in a in an intentional manner, in an intentional way. Amen. Not just casually. Not just casually. They what what we call they plow. Everybody say plow. They plow the soil. They plow the soil. They add to the soil nutrients. When they plow the soil, they uproot all the weeds, all the rocks, all the roots that are in the soil so that they can, they can uh, provide maximum productivity so that they can give all the possibilities for that soil to produce a crop. Amen. Plowing brings out the fresh soil. I don't know if you've ever seen somebody plowing, a, plowing a, a piece of land. It, it goes about 20 centimeters. There's, a, there's like a hook that goes 20 centimeters under the surface. And, and they, with, a, with, a, with an animal, it goes, they go along and you see it's, it brings out the fresh soil. Hallelujah. It plows the ground. It gets the ground ready for the seed. Then they add nutrients, they add water. And they control, they make they control the weeds, the pests, and the diseases. You and I, Jesus is using the example of a farmer to give us an idea of what we need to do to get our soil ready for his word and for the production of 30, 60, 100 fold. We need to plow our ground. We need to plow our hearts. How many hearts have become hard? How many, how many hearts have become dry? How many hearts have become... How many, how many of you here have become worldly? Have a worldly Christianity? How many of you here have a spiritless Christianity? How many of you here have become religious? Well, the time has come to plow the ground. Hallelujah. The time has come to plow your hearts and to get your field ready because God is about to move in the life of those that are ready. Can you say amen? God is about to move in those hearts that are hungry and that are thirsty and that are ready for the seed of His Word. Jeremiah 4.3 says, plow, plow up the hard ground of your hearts. Do not waste your seed among thorns. Get rid of the thorns. Get rid of the thorns. Get rid of the stones, the rocks that are in your hearts. And you can begin to name, a, name so many things of what thorns and, and, and rocks represent. But they represent so many things that have, have made the, the ground of our heart hard, dry. Maybe there's sin. Maybe there's bitterness. Maybe there's offense. Maybe there's unforgiveness in your heart. Maybe there's hurt. Maybe there's hurt in your heart. Frustrations. Anger. Irritated. Things that have crept in that make the heart hard. And we lose, we lose our interest for God. We lose our interest for His house. We lose our interest for His word. 
our heart becomes hard and you can have a preacher preach to you under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and it does nothing. You can even get into an atmosphere like this. People are worshipping and you do nothing. You can, you can open up the Bible and it says nothing to you. You can try to pray and, and you're looking at the time because your, the heart has become hard. It's time to plow the ground. Hallelujah. It's time to dig up that ground and bring out the fresh soil and, and get rid of the thorns, get rid of the weeds, get rid of those things that have crept into our hearts and made us hard and get ready for the seed of God's word to fall in our life to produce a harvest. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Mm. Hosea 10.12 says, I say, plant the good seeds of righteousness and you will harvest a crop of love. Plow up the hard ground. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts. For now is the time to seek the Lord. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts. For now is the time to seek the Lord. Listen, if you have something against someone, get rid of it. If you have hatred towards someone, get rid of it. If you feel condemned, get rid of it. If you feel frustrated and angry, get rid of it. Because your, the God's word, the 30, the 60, the 100 fold is too important to lose it for the sake of being offended. It's too important. What God wants to do in your life is too important. For you to, uh, we say in Spanish, descuidar tu terreno, to, to neglect your land because you want to keep thorns there. I'm not going to forgive. I'm not going to love. I'm not going, I'm not going to forget what they did. I'm going to hold on to it. Thorns. Thorns. I'm not going to change. Thorns. I don't care what the pastor says. I don't care what my dad or what my mom or what my, what, what, what my spiritual leader says. I'm not changing. And we get hard, and we get hard, and we get hard, and we get hard. And what, what once used to, you know, once used to break us, His presence now does nothing to us. Amen. Do you remember the time you used to read the Bible and tears would come down your cheeks when you would read something that hit you? Do you remember the time you'd walk into church excited? Like when you would go and see your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Do you remember the time when you could pray and time would just fly by? Do you remember that time when you were passionate for God? Passionate for His Word? Passionate for the house of God? Do you remember that time when you longed for His presence? Like David longed for the house of God. But now... Nothing, nothing touches us. We've lost the first love. We've lost the hunger. There's good news. There's good news. You can plow that ground today. You can plow the soil of your heart today. And you can get it ready for it to be good ground. So that you can start producing. You might not produce 100. But I think 30 is okay. 30% better. You're going somewhere. Step by step, Sunday after Sunday, week after week, month after month. I might not be where I want to be, but I'm going to where I want to be, and I'm not where I used to be. Hallelujah. I'm going forward. I, don't, I, don't, I, 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 I would like to talk differently to how I talk, but I don't talk like I used to talk. Hallelujah. There's something happening in my life. 30-fold, 30-fold. Hallelujah. I don't pray like I used to pray, but I'm praying a little bit more than I did. Hallelujah. 30-fold. I don't read the Bible like I should read the Bible, but I'm reading one verse a day. God, you're, you're advancing. Hallelujah. You're going forward. Amen. You watch what God begins to do when you plow the soil of your heart. Last thing, if I can get someone to come and play, maybe some of you, someone come and play or put some music on, whatever. Um, this, is the, this is the most important part of my message. How, how, because I, when I read the Bible, I read it very practically. I don't just say, you don't just say Christian, Christian terminologies and just, Leave it out there. How do you plow the ground? How do you, how, 
how do you intentionally plow the ground? What do you do? Do you go and get a plow? At, at, do you go to Bunnings after the service and get, get, a, get a, a shovel and start plowing your... What do you do? How do you plow your ground? How can you plow your ground? How can you be intentional in plowing your ground so that you can... So that it can be good ground. So that the, the thorns are taken away. The stones are taken away. Amen. The weeds are taken away. How? How do you do it? Well, we just read it there. For now is the time to seek the Lord. Plow, the, plow up the ground of your hearts. For now is the time to to seek the Lord. Do you know how you plow and how you prepare your hearts? Seeking the Lord. It's in His presence that we are plowed. Oh, hallelujah. It's in His presence that thorns are dealt with. It's in His presence that stones are taken away by the Holy Spirit. It's in His presence that the moisture comes back in His presence. Seeds cannot penetrate hard ground. Roots must be sown in soil that has moisture. Stumps must be removed. Hardness must be broken. Rocks must be dislodged. Thorns must be gathered and burned. Dry religion, hurt and pain and hardness must be softened by the presence of the Lord. Acts 3.19 says, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. How do we plow our ground? How do we get our ground ready for the seed of God's Word in His presence? in His presence. But I'm not talking about this casual, again, religious posture. You know, oh Lord, here I am. No, 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 no. Get on your face. And you say, Lord, there's some things that need to change. Lord, there's some thorns that need to be dealt with. Lord, there's some, there's some stones, there's some scenes in my life that are blocking your blessing. Holy Spirit, you need to help me. Holy Spirit, I've lost the love. I've lost the passion. I've lost the joy. But the, what, 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 what David says, return unto me the joy of my salvation. David, a man's after God's own heart, he would say, please, please take not your Holy Spirit from me. Return unto me the joy. I want the joy again. I want the joy. If you lose the joy, you lose everything. If you lose the joy, you lose everything. I feel the anointing strong here today, church. Return unto me the joy. If you, if you get the joy back, hallelujah, you get your passion back. If you get your joy back, you get your worship comes back. Your praise comes back. If you get your joy back, Going to church becomes an exciting experience. Return unto me the joy of your salvation that only comes in the presence of the Lord. Can you say amen? Come on, come on, come on, come on. The hardness of your heart, it's not going to be broken up by anything else but the presence. Times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Soften our hearts. Break up the fallow ground. Plow up my, my heart. Plow my soil, God. Take out the thorns of bitterness. Take out the thorns of unforgiveness. Take out the thorns of resentment. Take out the thorns of frustration. Take out the thorns, Lord, of this being disillusioned. Take out the thorns. Take out the religion that I've fallen into. Take, take it out, God. Take, take out the religion. Take out, take out the tradition. Take out the worldliness. 
Some of you are doing things that you know is not right in the eyes of God and you're doing it and the Holy Spirit's trying to convict you. Now is the time to yield and to get before Him and say, God, I need a touch. I need a touch. He only comes in His presence. Let's all stand up this morning. Plow the ground. Plow the ground.